welcome to the A Historian Knits podcast. This is a podcast about mostly knitting and we do have a little bit of cross stitch as usual. But first, let's get into um, the administrative stuff. I have a couple of things. First, I did have a giveaway last episode for this skein of yarn from Left Hand Lass in the Citrus Drop colorway. And I asked you to put citrus down in the comments to be entered into win. I did have 23 different comments that had citrus in it. So, the winner of this skein is going to be Brenda Bloomfield. Congratulations, Brenda. Get in touch with me about your mailing address and I will get this out to you as soon as possible. For the next episode, I do have another skein of yarn. This is a little bit more subdued than the last one. This is the Sultry Steps Good For You in the color Puter or 98. And it is just a very lovely gray. And it does have um, llama in it, so it has 40% superwash merino, 40% baby llama, and 20% nylon. So if you want to be entered into winning this skein of yarn on the next episode, just enter or just type in uh, U E W E down in the comments, and you could win this skein of yarn on the next episode. Okay, um, we do have one make-along going on right now. It is the stripey make-along, and that is going on all year. And it's basically just make anything with stripes on it. I will put the Ravelry link to our group, and you will find a chatter thread and a finished object thread. And I understand that Ravelry is still having issues. So again, um, I'm hoping it gets better, although it doesn't really seem to be. Um, but apparently there is a way, if, if you are able to, to uh, put the screen to the old version, instead of looking at the new version that might have some kind of um, health concerns related to it. So um, at this point, I'm hoping, again, I'm hoping and hoping that they fix the problem, but they don't really seem to be taking it very seriously, which I'm getting a little discouraged about. I'm looking at other options for the, the make-along and see if um, there are other ways that we could participate in this make-along. But that is going on till the end of the year, so I'm hoping they get um, everything done and, and safe for people to travel on the, the website, to navigate the website, and be able to use it without any kind of health effects. So that is the only knit along we have going on right now, so I will get into finished objects, which I do have a few. So as for finished objects, I do have a few of them. Um, one I actually don't have because my daughter is currently wearing it, but I will show you pictures of it when I get to it. Um, first, I have like the most not exciting <laughs> um, finished objects. And these are just, it's just a washcloth and some scrubbies that kind of went along with that. So one of my goals for 2019 is to use up leftovers. And so I had leftovers of this yarn, which I have no idea what it is. My mom gave me a bunch of scraps from her stash because um, all she knits is washcloths and dishcloths. So all she uses is cotton. And she just gave me some balls of some leftover yarns with no tags. So I have no idea what this is, but I was able to get this washcloth done. And then um, I got one scrubby and then two other ones. These are just garter. And I used up another yarn with this as well because I didn't have enough leftover to complete the another one of these. So yeah, that's the most not interest, not exciting one. <laughs> um, uneventful finished object. But I was able to get one more leftover out of my stash. Then I have a hat. This is the homebody, homebody hat by Helen Stewart. I showed this off on the last podcast. And I washed and blocked it. And honestly, it hasn't really changed in terms of the properties. As you can see, it's not very, it's not very stretchy. But it does fit my hat, it does fit my head. <laughs> um, so she fit my husband's head as well. So he's getting this as a Christmas gift this year. And this is the Queensland Drover, I believe the name of it was. I don't have the tag with me. Um, but I still have half of a skein of, half of a ball of the yarn left. Honestly, I probably wouldn't use it again. Um, the pattern was great, the yarn, not my favorite, not the stretchiest for a hat. Um, as you see here, there's not much give. So luckily it does fit, but yeah. So didn't really change. I thought it was gonna possibly maybe bloom a little bit more um, once I had blocked it, but it didn't really change. So, but it still works, still a hat, still usable. It's just not, I probably wouldn't buy this yarn again. Um, and it had silk and wool and I believe nylon. 
So I think the silk really played a huge part in that, um, not being able to stretch it as much. <laughs> And the, the other two projects that I have in front of me are two pairs of socks. So the first would be this. They're finally done. Um, I believe that I showed these off on the podcast last time as well. These are Desert Vista Dye Works in the color Gatsby. And the heel, I have no idea. It was just in my stash, but I thought it went really well with the colors. And these are for me. This was my attempt at making the monthly sock um, make along last year, and I only got as far as one one sock and I gave up. <laughs> so I finally was able to finish them. So I've had these on my needle since last January, January, 2019. So just a regular stockinette pair of socks. Then I have another pair of socks and you have not seen these because these were actually, um, I, I paid someone to crank these for me on a sock machine. So basically all I got back was the tube. And then I added the heels, toes and cuffs. Um, this was a cozy, it came with a cozy knitter self-striping socks. This, this particular mini, it was about 30 gram mini and it came with the socks and, um, in the colorway Mimosa. And I just thought it went really well with, um, the kind of the corals in this particular sock. And this was a Koigu, let's see, it's a hundred percent wool. So, um, the, the parts that are probably going to get worn the most are actually, um, they do have some nylon in them, but the, the rest of the socks is not, which I usually don't have problems with my socks. Um, I have a lot of socks, so I don't usually have problems with them um, wearing through. I'm trying to see if there's a colorway on here. There's a dye lot, dye code. The dye code is P934. So, yeah. <laughs> Um, that's all it's given me, but it's 100% wool, um, it's 50 grams, so this made one pair of socks. It's a little shorter than I would have liked, but that's what I got out of that one um, tube, and yeah, so I got another pair of socks, and if you notice something new from my background, I did have this box that's new, and that is because I filled up this box down here with socks for me for the year. So I'm very excited that I had to buy another box to put the socks for the year that I've knitted for myself. So this will just go into that, that bigger box. So I'm really excited about that. And I'll show you all of those at the end of the year when I'm kind of winding down um, the knitting for the year. So yeah, it's another pair of socks for me. And the last finished object is not here because my daughter is wearing it. And this is, and I'll put pictures on the screen, this is the Ripple Camisole by Jessie Made Designs. And um, the yarn, let me show you the yarn and then I'll kind of tell you the story of behind what happened. <laughs> so this is all I have left. It's about 10 grams, which will go in my blankets. But this is the Pink Adobe Dye Works in the retro colorway. It's 100% cotton, or I'm sorry, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. Cotton wasn't anywhere in there, but there we go. <laughs> so it was 100 grams and I basically used up 90 grams of it. And I haven't added this into my stash stash totals, which I'll share with you in just a minute. Um, everything else uh, was added into my stash stash totals. I just didn't get this finished until this morning. So I didn't add that into um, stash stash. And I'll talk about what stash stash is if you're not familiar with it in a minute. So the Ripple Camisole, I, I did swatch, I got gauge, I used the needles that they recommended, I made the size medium, <laughs> adult medium, and, you know, I kept looking at it and I'm like, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it was like literally, let me show you, probably about this big, my hand, it's here. That's how big it was. And I'm like, okay, well it's ribbing. So it'll stretch out, it'll stretch out. Like it's just, you know, all of them online look like this and it'll stretch out. Sorry about that, dogs are barking. And I kept knitting it and knitting it and knitting it because it was about 12 inches of knitting and then you separate for the, the front and the back, right? Cause it's a camisole. 
And I just kept knitting it and I got to the point where I went to go try it on. And I was not happy <laughs> with how it looked on my body. It just was not flattering. Like I just didn't like it. And at that point I'm like, I'm not going to wear this because it's not, I don't like the way this looks. I'm not, I just don't feel comfortable wearing this um, because it was, it's, it's supposed to be form fitting, obviously. Um, but it was a little too form fitting <laughs> and I just did not like the way that it looked on my body. So I was talking to my friend and my friend Mel and I was trying to figure out, okay, what am I going to do with this? Like I could make this into a cowl because basically at that point it was something that was like this big and it was just ribbing. I'm like, I could just make it a cowl and just wear it as a cowl and it'll be fine. Um, but then at the same time, I'm like, well, maybe my daughter could use it. So I put it on her and it fits her perfectly fits her perfectly. Um, it has a little bit of positive ease, which is great because she'll grow into it, but I'll put pictures on the screen now. It just fits her like perfectly, like it was made for her. So uh, I got that done this morning and she's wearing it today and it's, you know, problem solved. <laughs> I think I learned that I will not be making a garment that has ribbing because it just, it doesn't suit, first it doesn't suit my, my taste. I just kind of jumped on the, the bandwagon for, cause that top was really popular along with a lot, all, all of Jesse May's designs were really popular at the time. And I'm like, I'm gonna knit one too. Um, but it just doesn't fit my body type, which is perfectly fine. Um, I just didn't really like the way that it looked on my body and it's not something that I would usually wear anyway. I usually don't wear tight fitting things. Um, I, I like more kind of flowy, like you could tell by this dress, it's very flowy and comfortable. And that's usually how I, like to wear my clothes. Um, but it fits Amelia perfectly. So there we go. That was my last finished object. And although it, it could have been a disaster and I probably um, would have frogged it if it wouldn't have fit her as well. And it just turned into something great. And now she has a new piece that she could wear. So that is it for finished objects. I'm looking around making sure. That is it for finished objects. So now I'm gonna talk about a few whips that I have um, that I've been working on. So what's funny about my whips is that I've been like not really feeling the shawl knitting this year and both of the whips I'm going to show you are shawls. <laughs> so I don't know what that says, but it hasn't been my go-to for the year in terms of knitting. I really haven't wanted to knit on shawls this year. Um, I do have a couple in my whip pile that I've been working on and this is one of them, the first one I'm going to show you. So I've moved this one into here. This is my um, Mrs. Brown's bag. This is the one I usually take downstairs at night where we sit in front of the TV and I knit this project. So this has been on my needles for quite a while since last March, March 2019. This was supposed to be part of my make nine for 2019 and obviously I still am working on it. So it did not get done by the end of 2019. This is the Up Slope Shaw by um, Amanda Kramer. Kramer, I guess that's how you would say. I'll put it on the screen here. And it is a pretty sizable. I mean, it's not huge, but it's not tiny either. So it's kind of a medium size shawl. The last time you saw it on the podcast, it was down here. My little Colorado stitch marker there. So I have done since that point all of this. And of course, the rows are getting longer and longer. So I have done a lot since last time I showed this to you. And at this point, um, I've made a million mistakes in this pattern because it just wasn't clicking at first. And then when it clicked, I was like, oh, well that makes sense. And I'm not ripping back <laughs> and fixing this stuff. So you'll see here on the gray spot, you can tell. So you can see the gray spot gets bigger in the middle there. Apparently I did something wrong. And then it starts getting shorter, <laughs> but that's okay. I don't care. <laughs> so you can see, the pattern, it's a combination of stockinette and garter, and it's on US, these are my chow goos. I'm trying to think of what size I'm on. I think they're fours, fours or fives. Oh, six, Never mind. They're on US uh, size six, and you can see here, it's going to be pretty, pretty sizable, which I love. So the gray is actually in a Hue Loco yarn. These are all Colorado yarns. Everything about this shot is Colorado. I started this um shortly after six months after we moved here and um 
because I saw it at my local yarn shop. So I saw a sample of it and I wanted it to knit it up as well. So it's Upslope, um, which is a local beer here and a local brewery. And the Hugh Loco, she's a local dyer. She's about 45 minutes away from where I live. Um, the gray Hugh Loco in the pink peppercorn colorway. And then the pink is actually another local dyer and it's Herd of Cats in the Breathless colorway. So she's she's based out of Denver, I believe. So um, again, not very far away, half an hour. So um, the designer is from Colorado, the pattern is Colorado, the yarns are from Colorado. So this is like my Colorado shawl and then I put the little stitch marker that I made there, Colorado. So everything is Colorado themed. So I'm actually almost done. I believe I have four more of these pink uh, lines to do and then um, there's a whole section of gray after that. But after that, it'll be done. And I will have this project. This is probably one of my oldest projects. Um, of course, not counting the, the blankets that I've had on my needles forever. But this is just, it's very simple. And um, great TV knitting. Once, once my mind actually figured out what was going on. And so I should have this done, hopefully by the end of summer. I'm hoping by the end of summer, um, by September. I definitely should have this done. So yeah, that is one of my older whips. And um, that's why it's my, this this seems to be like my, I'm gonna get it done now bag. And everything, when I get something done in here, I put something else that's been on my needles for quite a while. And then I work on that basically monogamously. And then my other, my other work in progress is also a Shaw. And this is actually a new acquisition too. So I haven't really been buying yarn this year at all. Like the only yarn I've actually purchased, well, it's not true. I mean, I've, I've purchased a couple things here and there, but not the kind of yarn buying I was doing in the past years. So this year I really haven't been buying a whole lot of stuff. However, the Knit Girls, they were having a um, online festival a couple weekends ago. And um, so I bought this bag, which I love. This bag is by Whimsy Stitches on Etsy. And the project inside of it, I also bought on the, the virtual festival from Miss Babs. And when I saw this yarn, I, I couldn't resist. And I will show you how giant this ball is. This is, a, <laughs> you can tell, this is a great, <laughs> that might be my picture. I don't know, maybe, but this is, this is huge. It's like literally almost the size of my head. Um, this is DK Way yarn. This is in the Yowza by Miss Babs in the um, SSK Nashville Lights, I think it is, colorway. And I just, I loved it so much, I had to buy it. <laughs> and it's it's beautiful. It's, I actually had them wind it because there was no way this was gonna fit on my ball winder. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm making a shawl out of this. And it's one of the shawls I had in my um, library for a very long time. And I'm in mid row, but you can't really, it doesn't really affect anything right now. But this is going to be the Bide, B I D E, Bide Shaw by Helen Stewart. It was in one of her knit vents. I think it was last year's knit vent, 2019. And um, it's she actually did it in bulky yarn, which I'm not a big user of bulky weight. I just, I'm not a big fan. So I decided to do it in DK weight. And I saw that there were several people who had done it in DK weight and they put their, there are notes on there and I am basically copying them. I'm using the same needle and um, basically using this up until it runs out. It's a pretty easy design. It's um, a triangular shawl and then it has uh, eyelet detail later down at the bottom and I think there's a garter, garter edge. So that is the beginning of that and I absolutely love it. I think it'll go with so many things that I have in my wardrobe. And um, yeah, so that is the beginning of a shawl. So I will move my little marker so I keep track of, of what I showed you. Um, and yeah, I was like laughing so hard when this came in. It was, it was so big. Um, it was so big and it was hilarious. And I will put a, a picture, I took a picture next to a, just a regular size fingering weight skein. So you can kind of see the difference between the two cakes and how much bigger this one is than just a, a regular size skein. It's just, it was just really funny to me. <laughs>
but that is it for whips. So now let's talk about cross stitch a little bit. I do have one finished, fully finished object. And um, I'm trying to think about, no, I didn't get anything else finished. I did get a row of my Halloween, my tiny modernist Halloween calendar finished, but I will show you that next time. And then I'm starting a stitch along with my friend Belle on Saturday. Tiny Modernist is having a Christmas one that they're like putting out. It's like a mystery stitch along. Um, you know it's going to be Christmas oriented, but you don't exactly know what's going to be on it. So that starts on the 1st of August. So we're going to, we're going to be doing that virtually, you know, kind of doing a, a stitch along together. And of course we still have the Jardin Privé stitch along going on until September 1st. I do have one more pattern that I really wanted to get started, but um, we'll see how much time that new Christmas uh, stitch along takes for the month of August. Cause I get my first clue on August 1st and then my second one will be September 1st. So I have a whole month to finish it. So we'll see how far I get into that project before I stitch along the um, hard and prove but we do have the private hashtag private garden cell on Instagram. If you want to put and uh, your pictures on there of any Jardin Privé pattern and you want to join along in that particular stitch along, there's a place to see other people's uh, Jardin Privé patterns as well. So the one finished object I have is actually, um, it's very cute. Look at that. So I apologize for the glare. So I made this for my parents. This is a Havanese and they have a little Havanese that lives in their house, Patches, and that is her. She's actually more black and white, but there you go. Um, with black and white, you weren't really going to get the, the variegation um, as much as you do with the gray, but they'll, they'll be able to tell that that's her. So I made this on, this was a gray Ada that I got from DMC. I think it was from Michael's or Joann's or wherever. And then I just got this frame from Michael's and yeah, my mom is not a big trinket person. So like making like a little ornament or a pillow or anything like that, that's not her thing. So I figured a frame, you could kind of put it a little table or a nightstand or something and, um, something to actually, you could actually hang it up too. So there you go. There's my little Havanese. And this was a pattern by, um, Nikki pattern. I think it's Nikki pattern on Etsy. And this was actually, I bought, it was $4 for the PDF and it had at least six different other kinds of dogs on there, other breeds of dogs on there. And then they also had several other patterns for different kinds of dogs as well. So I just got the, I just decided to make just the Havanese. Um, you could have made all of the other dogs, but the Havanese is the one that I wanted. So there she is, there's Patches. <laughs> so that is my fully finished object, an FFO. And I'm really excited with how she came out. Um, this was, um, it wasn't challenging. It just had a lot of different color variations to it. And it was like every, there was a little bit of confetti going on there with like, you know, one color was over here and then one color, you know, we have one stitch, for example, you'll see here, you have one stitch here and one stitch here and one stitch here of that lighter kind of whitish, if I could point in the right direction, there we go, that whitish color. And then down here, you could tell that that's a different color right in the middle there. And then her little face has a couple of different shades of gray and white. So yeah, but it came out really nice and I really like how it came out. So there's patches. And I believe that is it for this time around. For my next Desert Vista Dye Works, I'll kind of show you that since I have it right over here. I already have it, my next Desert Vista Dye Works caked up. This is the Pick Some Peppers, which is very appropriate. If you would have seen the beginning of this episode, we're growing peppers this year. <laughs> so I just thought it fit really well. And this is going to be my August colorway. It has greens and yellows and reds and oranges. So I'm really excited about that. So that is my future, my future plans for knitting. And then I have my, my stitch along that's going on on starts on Saturday, the 1st of August. And that is it for my, for my knitting plans and my stitching plans in the foreseeable future. In terms of what's going on here, we're still <laughs> staying at home, not doing much. Um, of course we take walks and hikes and stuff like that, but not really doing much else. And um, our school situation, my school situation still hasn't changed. We have a faculty meeting on Friday, so we'll see 
if there's any news there. Um, Amelia is supposed to be going back to school two days a week and the rest is going to be online. So we'll see what happens. It's all, you know, for, for being somebody who is a huge planner, I plan things years in advance <laughs> and not being able to do that is really, really bothering me. Yeah, it's really bothering me not being able to plan things ahead of time. I'm not a spontaneous kind of person, <laughs> but you know, you have to take it one day at a time because there's really nothing else that you could do, right? It's it's basically beyond my control of what goes on with the, the pandemic, right? So it's just, it's been challenging not being able to plan anything, but we're doing the best we can. We're staying healthy. We're taking precautions. We're wearing masks. We're doing everything that we, we could be doing to try to prevent the spread of this virus. So yeah, that's basically, it's basically been our life for the past, since March. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that's it for now. I will see you in a couple of weeks. I hope you have a wonderful time crafting and I hope you're really enjoying your time with your family and um, enjoying the weather, enjoying the warmth, which I am a big summer person, so I love this time of year. So I hope you're doing all of the things and you're staying safe and healthy. I'll see you in a couple of weeks.